Hey everybody, welcome to my new channel, David's LE Art. For some time I've been trying to figure out what to do with my channel it, once I create it because I knew I wanted to create one. I wanted to somewhat showcase what I can do, but I also knew that I wanted to attempt to help people in some way, shape, or form. I didn't really know how or what I was going to do, but finally after starting this video and running through it all and doing some editing and whatnot, I've, I figured it out that I wanted to include the thoughts and opinions of the audience or viewers and integrate it into my art. And I'll explain how I, how I want to do that. So generally my paintings, I don't really think about them too much. I tend to paint off of how it feels. I don't have a set plan on how I'm going to complete the painting or what the painting's even going to be. About 80% of the time that I start a painting, it's completely different. It changes entirely from the original thought. And it's somewhat of a journey for me, as well as an understanding of what I want to achieve once I'm attempting the painting. I can show you an example right now on my Instagram page, David's LE Art. I have a painting here of whatever you want to consider it to be. And I did this for the family that you see in the photo. To me, they're my second family, and they asked me to do a painting for them, and I, of course, obliged. I'd love to, but a few hours into their painting, I changed it completely. I didn't like what I saw, and I had to abort mission and attempt something else. And when I did, you see the end result. It came out better than I had hoped for, and they seemed to really be pleased with it. Their interpretations of it are, are pretty good. Um, I won't get into that, but I, I enjoyed speaking to them about how they perceive the painting. I also have other ones on there on my Instagram page of really no thought whatsoever. I just did it. You'll see a white and gold one where all I did was draw a line through the canvas with a pencil and went from there. And I just went with my gut, what felt natural, what felt right. And in this channel, that's what I want to do. I want to paint like that for other people, but not just paint. I want to incorporate all forms of artistry, eventually building up to something amazing and grandiose. I want to involve things like woodworking or, or welding to create an art piece, or maybe multiple art pieces or something like that for people that are interested in that and are interested in seeing my perspective or maybe creating a perspective of theirs and bringing it to life. So I want to include people's opinions or maybe do personalized artwork for others, which to me would be wonderful, it's, especially if it's something that's really important as far as what you think or, or maybe uh, to commemorate a specific moment. I don't really do realistic art, I do abstract and that's kind of the point. To me, abstract art is emotion on a canvas. So with this painting that I have behind me, I learned a lot. It felt kind of forced, but that's because, again, I paint with my emotions instead of my thoughts. And so the painting behind me is more of a thought and idea type of painting versus my other abstract emotional paintings, which you can all see on my Instagram page, David's LE Art. But with doing this painting, I learned a lot as far as techniques, even the videography and the camera angles, I, I, I know I have to improve but I know what to do now because I went through this process of not doing a great job. But the painting is for my mother. She is currently working on her house as far as renovations and she's putting in new tile and painting the walls in a sort of white, brown, beige, yellow type of deal. I told her I could do a painting for her to kind of match the interior or the decor of the a living space. She thinks that she's gonna pay me for it, but I'm just gonna give it to her as a Christmas gift. It's Christmas. <laughs> Why not? What I'd like for you guys to do in the comments below is to give me your opinion on the painting and the process. But if you can do more than that, I would really appreciate it because I haven't taken art classes. I don't really understand certain aspects of art. And the only way I can do that is through exposure, experience, and knowledge. And I don't have a whole lot of that right now. So if you guys can give me some knowledge or tips even on how to improve myself or improve a specific technique that you see in the video, I'd love that. Any sort of critique, whether it's good or bad, I'll take it and try to absorb it in a positive manner. Now, if you finish this video all the way to the end, I, got, I have a little surprise for you. And I'm not gonna spoil it or give you any hints or clues, but towards the end of the video, if you can, give it a shot. And who knows, 
somebody might like the outcome. And now, without further adieu, here we go. You'll see here I put on some white, some brown, yellows. I mixed up some colors to achieve these tones here. And I began blending with a wet and dry brush. Now I'm starting on the other side and oh wait. As I said before, my painting changes completely from one idea to the next. Here I use chalk paint, various colors, and now it's dried up. Now I'm using some other white colors and brown colors to accentuate some grass, but in an abstract form. I'm not trying to make it too realistic and I use some small and big brushes to give different textures and sizes. Here I'm using string to attempt to paint some brush on the side and I just lay it down and pull it towards me or pull it sideways to give different looks to it, including small and big strings. And now I'm making up a flower and trying to create it. Here I'm using molding paste to create this strange flower type deal and some other ones right next to it as you can tell that are similar. I'll show you my process of the molding paste. Now I'm drawing out some of the flowers that I came up with they're not specific flowers of course they're just random and drawing the stalks with it and here's with the molding paste I use a sandwich bag I put some molding paste on the inside of it and ensure that I have enough to use now I'm trying to squeeze out some of the air and twist it up like a pipette for a cake for icing I cut off the tip I cut off just a very small portion to ensure that I have a pretty thin amount coming out instead of a lot so you can work on details and I paint the edge of the molding paste here to try and make it blend into the painting a little more versus just being a strip it kind of flattens out on the side and you see now I'm going over the pencil markings and putting molding paste on there and then using the paintbrush to try and flatten out the inside edges all right step 73 out of 1056 has been completed this excessively long painting is getting there. Now I am going to put up some different types of flowers in the background of the flowers here that I put up so far. It's going to be more like a circular grapevine type of design after that. Make it look like, you know, make it look decent or at least not terrible. I'm considering putting it both sides flaring out so basically a stalk and then great type of uh looking fruits seeds anything really well it's probably a good idea to have this all taken care of beforehand as far as my ideas but that's that's how i how i've started painting i guess that could be a poor habit that i've built up unfortunately i think we got it we'll see I'd say it looks like it's possible. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. What if I did paintings a few steps at a time and then asked for ideas from the viewers? And then that means we all put it together as a group and create the painting ourselves. Wow, that's an idea. Let's do that shit. Honestly, my next painting, I think I'm going to get everybody else's help. Well, anybody that decides to watch the video and put a comment down as to how they would improve it or what they would like the next... Or what they'd like the next step to be in the painting. <laughs> so we got the large one, and I believe I wanted two here or three. You should paint. Not easy to draw on. Professional art tip. <laughs> uh, I don't even get paid for this. It'll take a while, but we can do this. I'm not really so concerned about how long it's going to take. It's just actually doing it because this is all still quite new for me. And I don't want to mess up, but we'll see what happens. We can do this together. Yay. <laughs> Oh, man, I need help. So I'm going to do the leaves first. Once I do that, then I'll get started on the doop, 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 doop. The doop, 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 doop is the, uh, the little dots.
Probably should have just said dots. So I got my handy dandy fancy water container. It's it's just it's just a cut up water bottle. And my handy dandy paintbrush. The tiniest one I could find. This was actually my grandmother's paintbrush. I've got a her paint set. Actually, she is the reason I started pursuing art and painting. Rest in peace, Grandma Sarah. It felt right, you know? Pursuing art. I feel like it's gonna lead me somewhere. Oh. Not too bad. I kinda like it. This is what it looks like with the molding paste. No paint over it whatsoever. Just plain old gray molding paste for now. And I'll do the stalks eventually also. As you can see here, I finished up the stalks. And now it's time to start painting. I already put iridescent white on the little seed fruit things there. As well as the strange flowers on the left. And I put another layer, I put three layers of iridescent white on there and this is chalk paint and white paint that I put on the weird flowers and now I'm trying to paint the edges of those little tiny leaves with some green and I'm painting the stalks a white now I do the base layer of these specific flowers on the right hand side that are a little bit different than the other ones so I made different colors for them and now I'm doing all the edges but I'm not just painting the edges as you can see here I'm actually trying to put a dab or somewhat larger amount of paint on there so I don't have to paint those edges four times. Instead, it's one, one go. And now this is the second colored flower, which has a yellow base to it instead of a white. I'm getting the edges whitened up to go into the yellow. I wanted it to kind of stand out and be really different as far as the white and yellow combination. And I'm showing here just one little mix of paint that I do and I've done this many times already and I just put two little drops in there and then mix it up and try and achieve the color I want now I'm painting all the edges again because I didn't like the color initially and here I'm putting some white in the flowers because I thought they were a little too yellow on the inside and it's not the color I really wanted and now I'm putting some yellow in the middle of these leaves and then as you can see there's thick layers of paint going on there like stems on the petals that I just roll on there here I'm just putting in a large amount of white paint because I wanted the middle to be really bright compared to the outside of the, the petals and so I just put a large amount of um, titanium white around there and spread it doing the same thing right here just putting a large amount and then I'll spread it eventually and I'm painting the inside of the petals and now adding more yellow this is just working on a little blending now I'm putting some white into the petals as well kind of letting it fade in there so it doesn't look too obvious the difference in colors I mean here I'm painting all the little edges, trying to brighten them up in comparison to the inside of the petals. And I use my little string technique again. I just made all that up earlier. I never used the string technique. I've never used molding paste. So all of this is pretty new to me. And here's the finished result.
So if you stuck around till the end of the video, I appreciate it. Let me know what you think. Let me know how I can do better. The little surprise that I have for you guys is I want you to attempt to guess what LE stands for in David's LE art. The first person that can do that in the comment section below will have a chance to collaborate with me on a new painting that you can get for free. So I want to include other people and their opinions or their thoughts throughout my paintings and my artwork in the future so that it's an interactive page basically. You give me a thought or you give me an idea and I'll try to actually bring it to life in some way, shape or form. At first I'm gonna start with paintings and then as I move up and get better at what I'm doing, it'll be more than just a painting. But for right now, I want you guys to try and guess what LE stands for. The first person to do that in the comments section, I will try to video chat with you and get your thoughts and ideas and opinions on a painting but the catch behind this is it's not going to be a specific painting it's going to be an abstract so we can work out a color scheme and things similar to that but it may not be anything that you really truly expect which could be a good thing or a bad thing that's kind of the fun of it but the painting will approximately be about this tall this wide it's expensive to ship things so i don't want to send anything too big because i am not rich i have a tiny budget and that's it now I can't have you sending multiple guesses to me only one person gets one attempt first person to get it we'll talk I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say and I look forward to doing a painting for somebody I've never met before and maybe bringing a smile to their face making their day or their week or their year better whatever I can do I want to help and I want to use my skills and knowledge to do that for others. Thanks you guys, I'll see you later.